So in this video today, we're going to continue talking about CMOS logic, and I have a very special guest with me, my wonderful dad. Hi, dad. Hi. So we were talking the other day about CMOS logic gates, and you started talking to me about Venn diagrams, which was actually not something I had learned in school. Right. So I was hoping you could share with the class. All right, I'll try. So Venn diagrams are basically a pictorial view to, to look at uh, logic gates or how the logic gate, their uh, truth table would appear visually. So in, in this one, we see that A is inside the circle and its complement or the inverted value is outside the circle. So if A is, is a one, everything outside is a zero. And the logic gate is an inverter that you see above there, where A is the input and its complement A naught is the output. And so if you have a one on the input, you have a zero on the output. And if you have a zero on the input, you have a one on the output. There's more complex gates that use two inputs, the A and a B, and they have Venn diagrams. And this is a series of Venn diagrams that show A and B and logic gates and what it would appear as a diagram. Over on the left side is A and B, where the shaded area is where you have both A and B circles intersecting. <clears throat> Exclusive OR gates are used mostly in arithmetic operations, uh, adders and multipliers, because multipliers are just a series of adders. They're also used in pseudo-random uh, number generators uh, and LFSRs, linear feedback shift registers, where you're trying to create a, uh, a pseudo-random bit stream, and they're used in testing high-speed uh, differential interfaces. And the NAND gate uh, does not take a lot of transistors to implement. And then a AND gate just is a usually a NAND gate with an inverter on the output to create those two gates. And then um, the other common ones are the OR, the NOR, and the exclusive OR. So should we jump into talking about the schematic? Sure. Okay, so here would be the symbol representation of the NAND gate. Correct. Were we uh, talking about the NAND first lesson or the NOR? We're talking about the NOR, but I think the NAND would be better. Okay, we'll talk about that one first. Okay, so I've drawn the symbol for the NAND gate. Okay, so I'm going to label all the nodes in the schematic. So we've got VDD up top, and we've got A and B applied to each input of the PMOS devices. I've drawn the PMOS devices the digital way, so that's with a bubble on the gates. And does it matter if I have A on this gate or this gate? No. So why is that? Well, because they're in series, you could, do, you could reverse it either way. You need both of those on for get a low. Mm -hmm. And because of that, if A was on the bottom and B was on the top, you still have to have the same conditions to get a low. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through every combination of the inputs. <clears throat> right. So it doesn't matter the order that we do it. Right. And you bring up a good point. So the PMOS devices are in parallel and the MOS devices are in series. So that's always a good thing to note because then you can do a quick sanity check after you do create the truth table. And you can just make sure that, okay, the only time that this output node, the only time that the output node gets pulled low is when both A and B are one right. or high. Right. So do you want to talk us through each of the logic conditions for what we get at the output? Yeah, the well, like you said, the only time that the output is low is when both A and B are logic high or 1. And that's the condition, the only condition when the output is low. All other conditions, the output is going to be high because either A or B is low. And with the low on either of those, that will turn on uh, one or the other or both of the PMOS transistors to VDD and you'll have a high output. Okay, in the truth table, when both A and B are zero, you're going to have a high output because the top two transistors will both be turned on. The two PMOS transistors will be turned on and the two NMOS at the bottom will both be off. So uh, the output will be pulled to the VDD rail and uh, it will be a logic high. In the case where A is zero and B is one, the transistor input at A, the A PMOS transistor, that will turn on and that will pull the output to the VDD rail. The B input to the PMOS transistor will keep that transistor turned off. And then the, the two transistors on the bottom are NMOS and only the B input NMOS transistor will be on, but the A input NMOS transistor will be off. So if we thought of these as ideal switches, mm -hmm. you'd see that the switch between VDD and the output is closed for A being low, so P1 is on, and it pulls the output node all the way high. 
-hmm. It has a lot of noise margin as opposed to TTL. There's yeah, the CMOS inputs will switch somewhere, let's say halfway between VDD and ground. So they have a switching point somewhere in the middle where they'll turn on or off. The uh, when the output switches, it's going to switch to all the way up to VDD, almost all the way to VDD. It'll be just whatever the voltage drop of a uh, a, a PMOS transistor, you know, on uh, value is. When it, what's that voltage drop? You know, so which is very small, so it's almost VDD. And then when you when you have it switching to ground, it's the opposite, where you have an NMOS that's turned on, a very small voltage drop across that, so the output it's almost ground. So with that wide output driving an input, they'll switch very close to somewhere in between, v, you know, about halfway between VDD and ground. There's a lot of margin that when it's going high, when it's going low, that you won't be anywhere near that value to where you have to be concerned. Okay, so for the last case, when A is high and B is high, both transistor N1 and N2 are on. And so they're going to pull that output node low. And because they're in series, they both have to be on for the output to be pulled low. Mm -hmm. So again, a quick a quick way to check your work, you can just make sure that the series devices both have to be on at the same time. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, both uh, uh, PMOS transistors are off. And so for the best case scenario, if we wanted this to switch really quickly, we would want both PMOS devices to be on at the same time, right? You could, but that's just going high. Just going high, yeah. pulling that node high, we'd want them both to be on at the same time. And then the best the best case we can do is actually the only case for the low is when both N1 and N2 are on. So for transistor sizing with this one, um, if we were to think about just the simple inverter and we just had um, an NMOS and a PMOS connected in series like this, the NMOS device and the PMOS device are going to be sized so that the PMOS device is two times the W over L of the NMOS device-ish. And that's just because of the difference in the mobilities of the whole versus the electrons. The, the holes move slower than the electrons. And so for this device to have equal rise and fall times between when the output node is being pulled up and pulled down, you have two PMOS devices operating in parallel and two N NMOS devices operating in series. So this is equivalent to having one NMOS device pull down this node because the maximum current that can flow through here is just the drain current of one NMOS device, whereas the current that can flow to charge up this node is going to be the current of two PMOS devices or something like that, right? right? So we would expect actually that the W over L for a NAND gate can be the same for the PMOS and NMOS devices, right? Right. Seems legit. And then also just to be consistent with our nomenclature earlier, this would be A and this would be A bar. All right. So since we're talking about it, how can we make this into an AND gate? Put an inverter on the output. You could label that first output like the NAND output and the second output is the AND output if you wanted to. And if you want, you can draw the truth table for the AND anywhere else you want. And it's just the inversion. The inversion of all these. Mm -hmm. So AND is only true if both A and, and B are true. Right. So that center area is shaded in the Venn diagram. So this AND gate costs us an extra two devices. Yep. And How you can actually, they can actually, have, they have programs because you've heard of sum of products and product of sums. They can do a conversion to where they implement logic it rather than in the AND or realm of things to an a NAND, I don't know if it be NAND or what, but more they implement more things in NAND gates just because you reduce the number of um, transistors. But that's only really if you're if you're designing something what I call custom wise, because if you look at your uh, your gate arrays, whether it's Xilinx or any of the others, those are already predefined logic gates in there that you have available to use, and you just have to use them. So you you're not actually going. Oh, I gotta be real careful how I use my transistors. Transistors. You don't have like a sea of transistors, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, hook them all up. Then you're counting transistors. That might be an might be an ASIC solution, but I don't know anymore with mm -hmm. so much. And so um, I think there's more at the level, but it's good to know the level where it, it's at at the transistor level. And then if they want to like reduce the transistor count, they can use as much try to use as much NAND gates mm -hmm. as possible. But and again, reducing the transistor count is good 
center, reduce the power consumption, and reduce the area. Yeah. And basically reduce the cost. So let's talk about North. Yeah. And this is sort of looks like the complement. Yeah. Is this why I keep hearing the word complementary? Complementary. All right. So should we talk through uh, the truth table on this? Spoiler alert. Spoiler. This is our NOR gate. All right. So what happens when both A and B are zero? When A and B are zero, um, the output would be a one because so in the case where both a and b are zero there's basically two closed switches between v and d and the output and right. so the output's pulled all the way high right all right so what about the case where a is zero and b is one where when a is zero and b is one so I made a mistake and I did not label all my devices. Tisk tisk, bad designer. So I'm gonna label these real quick. It'll make it easier to talk about. Okay, so for the case when A is zero and B is one, you and said my P1 is gonna be closed, right? It's like a closed yep. switch. P1 should, yeah, P1 will be closed and P2 will be open. And so there's no path to VDD. And down below, N1 will be uh, open and N2. And two, the one with the B input will be closed because it's high. That will that will turn on the uh, NMOS transistor there, and you will have a logic low on the output. In the case where A is one and B is zero, the P1 transistor with the A input will be turned off, so it will be open. The B input on the P2 transistor will be on, but there won't be a path to VDD because P1 is open. The two bottom transistors, you'll have A input on N1 will turn that transistor on and that will be the path to ground and the, the B input will be low on N2 input and that will be open so the output will be low via the N1 and N1 transistor. The last case where both A and B are high the two PMOS transistors on top P1 and P2 will both be open and the two NMOS transistors on the bottom because the inputs are high on those they'll both be closed and they'll bring the output to ground, so it'll be low. Then, if you have another column there, if you drive the output of the NOR through an inverter, that output will then be your OR gate. So, what you find out is it requires two more transistors to create an OR versus a NOR, and two extra transistors to create the AND versus the NAND. So if we, again, were to talk about worst case rise and fall times for this circuit and transistor sizing, um, to pull up this node to VDD, the maximum current I can have is the current through one PMOS transistor. So the drain current of one PMOS transistor. And that is the fastest rise time that I can get out of this NOR gate. The fastest fall time I can get, meaning the fastest time it takes to drag the output from a high to a low value, is when both N1 and N2 are pulling this node down. So I have two times the drain current because I have N1 and N2 both pulling this node down. And so these transistors up here, these PMOS devices, for the inverter they would need to be about twice as big as the MOS device. But since now there's two NMOSs pulling them down, they need to be four times as big to compensate. Correct. The, the two on top are charging that node capacitance up, and the two on the bottom are discharging the node capacitance. You said the other one was a slightly different based on home mobility versus electron mobility. Yep, so that's process specific. So if you were to say maybe look in the SPICE model for your particular process that you're simulating, you would see the mobility is typically labeled like mu n and mu p or u n and mu p. You would typically see that it's like two to two and a half times bigger for the MOS device than for the PMOS device. And so that's how you come up with the W and Ls for the inverter. And then you base everything else off of that inverter sizing. And you would um, you would um, do the ratio of the inverter sizing based on what your process said was the ratio of the whole mobility versus the electron mobility. Exactly. So if it was two to one, you'd go two to one. If it was a crappy, you know, process and you had whatever, you know, three to one or 1.25 to one, then you do your sizing based on your process. Yeah. I mean, and you call it crappy, but I've worked in a, in a process that had <laughs> <laughs> that three to one ratio. So, uh, so the reason why, and, and I, I typically avoid equations, but um, the ID equation is like one half mu n k prime w over L 
and then some kind of bias, maybe like VGS minus VT squared or something like that, VT squared. And so the value that I'm talking about right here is this mu, this mu value. Mm -hmm. And what you want to happen when we're talking about current discharging and charging a node, this would be like for IDN. And for IDP, it's the same thing. And so you want the current that's pulling this node up or this node down during switching to be equal. So you're going to... So you're going to set the IDN equal to IDP. Now, typically the VTs are a little bit off, right? They're not typically the right. same. Um, they're not perfectly symmetric. And that K prime value um, is uh, intrinsic for the process, but that's a parameter that's based on the thickness of the gate oxide and things like that. So this is actually the same for these devices. So you end up with um, this W over L parameter and the ratio of the mobilities. Um, to determine how you get the current in the PMOS to match the current in the MOS. So when you say VT, you're talking about one is VTP and one is VTN. Oh, I should have labeled that. That's a great point, Dad. Yes, I'm talking about uh, the threshold voltage at the MOS device and the threshold voltage at the PMOS device. Right. Yep. So when it comes to um, these types of logic gates and Venn diagrams, is there anything else we should chat about before um, it's time for some whiskey? <laughs> The exclusive or the exclusive. Oh man, that's a good one. And I'm trying to remember if we look at the truth table of an exclusive R. An exclusive R is like your your two light switches. Okay, so I've drawn the truth table for the exclusive or, as well as the Venn diagram, which I probably should have been drawn all along <laughs> for the other ones. So what do I need? You said I needed a couple inverters, right? Yeah. So I typically do it like that. I do a bar like that. that. I do too. Oh, okay. I think I uh, picked that up because I was looking at Venn diagrams and many of the documentation of Venn diagrams have the little... The bing. Yeah. Why don't we make this intentionally painful? We don't label any of the inputs on the gate and we just use the truth table to tell us which gates should be connected to which inputs. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at it. Well, that's we what I'm saying. We have so four maybe, cases. Yeah, we've got four cases. Maybe we can start with the easy one. We can do it blind because we know we've got four cases and we kind of have four paths that could go between V okay, and ground. Okay, now I got it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. We've got two paths between the output and ground and two paths between the output and DVD, right? And there's four cases in this truth table. So right. we can basically say, okay, for one of these cases, I need I need A and B being zero to pull this node down. Right. So I'm going to call this A bar and this B bar. Right. And this takes care of this first case right. when A is zero and B is zero. Okay. So how do we do this one? A is zero and B is one. So we're going to have one, a case where it's uh, A and uh, B bar. And then the other case will be the opposite, A bar and B. Now get your two middle cases where it's a logic high. Right. So we're able to pull this node up. And then for this last one. You're getting the two cases where it's A and B. That's our easy one. Yeah. All right. So this behaves supposedly like an exclusive or. exclusive or. Yes, it does. And you're getting the A bar and B bar from the two inverters that we're showing simply in the with the logic diagram and not. Right. We're showing the the inverters there as symbols, in reality, each one of those would be a PMOS and an NMOS transistor as an inverter. Four extra transistors, they would drive this little array of uh, transistors to get the exclusive or logic. So the way we're going to show this is most uh, typical way you would see it if you were going to do this with logic gates. It requires an AND gate, an OR gate, and an AND gate, so three logic gates. And you have your A and B inputs, they drive the NAND gate, and they also drive the OR gate. What this gives you is the NAND gate takes care of your 1-1 one, one condition where the output is 0. The OR gate takes care of the 0-0 zero, zero condition where its output is 0. The two of these together drive an AND gate. So whenever the, those two outputs, are, either of those outputs are 0, the AND gate will be 0. And the two conditions in between where it's 0, 1 and 1, 0, both the NAND and the OR will both be 1, and the output of the AND will be a 1. And that's your exclusive OR. And that's how you would do it with logic gates instead of the, the transistors. Well, thanks for hanging out, Dad. I appreciate it. That's great to be here. <laughs> well, let's go get special. whiskey. <laughs> I think it's time for whiskey. Uh, yeah. Whiskey, yeah.